Hey guys, Eckhart Slaughter here. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Starship vs. the series, where I take two ships in the Star Wars universe, put them head to head, and try to predict which one would come out on top. Today's idea comes from Nicholas Gavin, who suggests that I put the Providence class dreadnought against the Imperial Star Destroyer Mark I. As noted by you guys in the comments, this idea has come up a few times and it's been on my radar for a while now, so thank you to everyone else who suggested it. I think I will slightly vary his suggestion, I'll still go with the larger version of the Providence class dreadnought, but I'm going to take the Imperial 2 class star destroyer. I think that that ship's much more well known, it's more interesting, and it's what I've noticed you guys asking for more often than the Imperial one. If you have a suggestion for a video, make sure you let me know down in the comments section, and if you see a video idea that you like, make sure you give it a thumbs up and a supporting comment. As mentioned, the first ship we're looking at today is the Providence Class Dreadnought. There are several versions of this ship. There's a smaller 1km version, and there's a larger 2km version, and that's the one we're looking at today. An example of the larger 2km version is the Invincible, which was the flagship for Admiral Trench during the Clone Wars, well, one of his flagships. Going against that ship is the 500 meters shorter Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer. This I think will be a very interesting battle. The Imperial 2 makes some changes from the Imperial 1, which kind of help it in some respects, but also hurt it in others, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Today we're looking at these ships in three different categories, weaponry, defensive capabilities, and fighter support, but it's not a race to see which ship wins more categories, we're going to be looking at this battle overall, and we'll also be considering things like intangibles here. I only have a few other rules, and the first is that because we're looking at the ships themselves, and that's our focus in this series, we're presuming that they're each captained and piloted and controlled by equally skilled persons. Also, we're taking these two ships in their stock form. So, for example, the Invincible used by Admiral Trench is not a stock dreadnought, so it's got some features that we won't be considering in this battle. We're going to look first at weaponry, and we'll start with the Providence class dreadnought. Unfortunately, the only weaponry numbers we have for the Separatist ship come from the Revenge of the Sith cross sections book, and that actually is in reference to the Invisible Hand, which is not the dreadnought version, it's the smaller version. So because the dreadnought version is twice the size of the smaller version, and the appearance doesn't actually appear to change, I'm just going to double the weaponry numbers, and I think that that should bring us pretty close to what the dreadnought would have actually had. So the ship had 28 quad turbo laser cannons, which would be its main anti-capital ship batteries as well as 204 proton tubes, which I believed are grouped into several batteries. Finally, to use against capital ships, it had four heavy ion cannons. So this is certainly not the least well-armed ship we've seen. Quad turbo laser turrets are extremely powerful, and 28 of them is a good amount, but typically ships will have some sort of main turbo laser batteries and then secondary guns as well. We'll see this with the Imperial's two star destroyer, which has main heavy guns and then secondary weapons. Though I guess the Providence does have those 204 proton torpedo tubes. It's really hard for me to evaluate how these work. I mean, capital ships often have proton torpedoes, but we almost never see them being used. It's unclear how they would interact with another ship's shields, and even if, whether they'd be used against larger capital ships. We see in the Battle of Christophus that proton torpedoes used by Providence can be extremely effective against another capital ship, and we see that because it actually shoots itself with its own torpedoes. Though part of the serious damage here was because the shield was down, and that ship had specially designed thermal shielding. So yeah, I'm really not sure. I guess the proton torpedoes may be even the main weapon on this ship, although the films would make it seem like the turbo lasers are much more important. Aside from that, the ship also did have a point defense system. It had 24 point defense ion cannons and 68 dual laser cannons. Again, not bad, but certainly not amazing for a ship of its size. Looking now at the Imperial 2, this ship was extraordinarily well armed. Its most powerful weapons were the octuple barbette turbo laser cannons. These eight weapons can be seen on either side of the center mass of the ship. However, along with that, it also had 50 heavy turbo laser batteries, 50 turbo laser batteries just of the regular variety, and then additional guns. Like I said, these things are absolutely armed to the teeth, and for its size at under two kilometers, it's hard to imagine a better anti-capital ship spaceship. However, there is one issue here, and that's that these ships do not have starfighter defense cannons. The only other weapon that I didn't mention that the ship has is 20 heavy ion cannons, and these won't be effective against starfighters. It's got no laser cannons, no flak cannons, no point defense cannons, really nothing to help it protect against smaller strike craft. 
And I mean, we see, for example, during The Empire Strikes Back, how much trouble an Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer has taking down the Millennium Falcon. It hits it a few times with its main turbo lasers, but it isn't able to effectively take the ship down. The question is, which ship has the better weapons? The Imperial 2, which is filled really to the brim with turbo lasers and anti-capital ship weaponry, or the Providence Dreadnought, which, despite its size, actually has much less weapons on it, but does have the ability to fight off starfighters and has these proton torpedo tubes. I'm really not sure how to handle these proton torpedoes, but I don't think that they are that much more powerful than a turbo laser when a ship has its shields up. And I mean, I arrive at that conclusion just by straight logic. I mean, the Imperial 2 is specifically meant to fight off larger capital ships, and it doesn't use proton torpedoes at all, nor do most ships in the Star Wars universe. It is really hard to ignore just how many powerful weapons the Imperial 2 has, especially given its wedge shape, which I always talk about, and which allows it to fire on an enemy from most positions. The Providence, on the other hand, is more effective in a broadside position, and it will typically have some of its guns pointed away from the battle where, of course, they're useless. It really does evoke images of an old sailing ship, which is often how it's used in battle, which is fairly disappointing. So I'm going to give this category to the Imperial 2, but don't forget, it's got no anti-starfighter weaponry, so this isn't really a slam dunk. Alright, let's now talk about defense and durability, and we'll start again with the Providence. First, I just want to mention that we are not using thermal shielding, because I'm not convinced that this was standard on most Providence dreadnoughts. Other than that, we only really know that this was one of the main capital ships of the Separatist Navy, and it really could stand up to most Republic ships, although none of these ships were even nearly as powerful as the Imperial 2. When upgrade from the Imperial 1 to the Imperial 2, the ship got new and stronger shielding and a thicker, stronger hull. I have no doubt when just looking at the ship on a basic level that the Imperial 2 is more durable, and probably by a good amount. It was created for a different era, one where capital ships had more weapons and heavier weapons. However, the Imperial Star Destroyer is also poorly designed, at least from a defensive standpoint. It has a massive and overexposed bridge, which is a target especially for starfighters. This, combined with the fact that it does not have any point defense weaponry, is fairly worrying. The Providence doesn't have the same issue. While it does have a tower with a large bulb at the top, this is a sensor array, not the main bridge. A ship can most likely survive the destruction of this sensor array, unlike, say, if the Imperial 2 lost its main bridge. So I'm going to call this category a tie. Okay, so let's now move into the final category, Starfighters. Assuming that a scaled up Providence would have proportionally more fighters than the smaller version, which I think is a fair assumption, the Providence Dreadnought would have carried 240 droid Tri-Fighters and 240 Vulture Droids. The high capacity is largely due to the fact that, kind of like battle droids, these ships can be stacked relatively efficiently and you don't need space for a human or otherwise sentient pilot to get inside. The Imperial 2 Star Destroyer, on the other hand, would have carried only around 70 Thai Starfighters. This is really not great for the Empire here. Arguably, a Vulture droid is as effective as a Tie Fighter. It actually has more weaponry and has the ability to carry torpedoes. While the programming on a Vulture droid probably isn't as impressive as, say, the natural instincts on an organic pilot, the sheer amount of Vulture droids alone should allow the Confederacy to rule the skies. And that's without considering the droid Tri-Fighter, which has three light laser cannons, a medium laser cannon, missiles, and of course, buzz droid dispensers. We'll talk more about this later, but I'm going to give this category, of course, to the Confederacy of Independent Systems and the Providence Class Dreadnought. All right, so for intangibles, the only thing I want to mention is that the Providence was known to be a pretty fast, pretty maneuverable capital ship, and both its top speed and its acceleration were probably greater than the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer. Let's now talk about the actual battle itself. We have the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer and its overwhelming weaponry going against the larger Providence class dreadnought. This is going to be a very, very close battle in my mind, and what it really comes down to is whether the superior weapons on the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer are actually deadly enough to take down the Dreadnought before it can overwhelm it with its fighters. We know that because of how Vulture Droids are powered, the Dreadnought will not be able to send out its full complement of fighters at once. It will probably send a third out and then return that first third and then send the next third out and so on and so forth. However, I'm not aware of any same limitations with the Tri-Fighters. So it will be essentially a third of the province's Droid Fighters and 
all of its tri droids going against 70 TIE fighters from the Imperial 2. However, presumably, the Dreadnought will be able to help its fighters with its point defense laser cannon. So, this is a huge advantage for the Confederacy. And this one is so close that I've gone back and forth multiple times trying to decide who would win. I have no doubt at all that the droids will rule the sky and that the droid tri fighters will be able to swarm the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer. However, the weapons on the Imperial 2 are just so powerful and so damaging that they will be able to do serious damage to the Providence relatively quickly. This isn't a battle that the droid dreadnought can win by just standing and fighting. It doesn't have the weaponry to do so, and really, its anti capital ship weapons aren't super impressive. And I think what any smart captain would do when faced with such overwhelming firepower would be to turn and run away. Not actually jump to hyperspace because that's not allowed in this matchup, but turn and try to get as far away from the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer as it can. We'll also probably want to launch its missiles at the ship. Not quite sure how effective this will be, but hey, why not do so? When running, it should be able to at least minimize the power of the Imperial 2 Star Destroyer's weapons, although it's also exposing its engine. And if the Imperials get lucky and take out one of the engine blocks, it's in big, big trouble. Assuming that it is able to make some distance between the two ships, it will then be a battle of the Starfighters, and the Imperial Star Destroyer will be forced to use some of its turbo lasers to try to take down the very fast, very nimble droid Starfighters, which will be doing serious damage by this point. This is difficult for a couple of reasons. Turbo lasers aren't really meant to turn and fire towards the ship, and they're not meant to be used in a point defense role. They're fairly slow and focused more on power rather than speed. Ultimately, this comes down to the fact that there are going to be droids crawling over the bridge of the Star Destroyer. And I mean that literally, because there's going to be buzz droids pulling away at the armor, rockets hitting against it. It's going to be a bad situation. And just because of the overwhelming numbers of the droids, I have to give this battle to the Providence class dreadnought. It has too many fighters, and the Imperial 2 has no counter for it. That being said, because its weapons are so powerful, I wouldn't be surprised if the Imperials do manage to at least disable, if not destroy, the Providence class. This could very well end in a tie, with the droids of the Providence ripping apart the Imperial 2, but with the ship itself actually being destroyed. So I'm only going to give this battle to the Separatists 5.5 times out of 10. This has been one of the closest battles on Star Wars Starship Versus to date. But let me know what you think. I would love to hear down in the comments if you think I got this one right, if you think I got it wrong, who you think would win, and how effective the droid Starfighters and the Tri Fighters would be against the Imperial ship. Also, take a second right now in the upper right corner to vote and let me know who you think you would have won. And and don't forget, if you haven't already, let me know down in the comments which match you'd like to see next. Since the donations are slowing down for my fundraising, I'm going to leave the update for this week until Friday and I'll get it all done at once. And for those who don't know, if you donate on my GoFundMe page at gofundme.com slash Eckhart's Ladder and give $20 or more, you can get your own custom made Star Wars Who Would Win video. That will be uploaded to the main channel, I'll credit you, it will be a whole lot of fun. But if you guys don't want to do that, if you can't afford to do that, if you just don't want to do that, that is totally fine and hey, I understand. But if you still want to get further involved in the community, you can follow me on Twitter or join the Discord, which are both a ton of fun. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all of your attention, all of your views, all of your likes, all of your favorites. Thanks again, guys. As always, may the force be with you.